What's up, nerds? My name is Dr. Rob Austin McKee, Professor of Organizational Behavior and Leadership here with MGT.edu, the Open Access Business School. In this video, we'll be discussing personality, specifically the big five constructs of extroversion, introversion, uh, agreeableness, conscientiousness, openness to experience, and emotional stability, neuroticism. We'll provide some definitions as well as some examples and discuss the practical importance of these concepts. Si hablas español, tenemos una versión en español de este video disponible en mi canal de YouTube. Uh, also, a transcript of this video is available on my website, robaustinmckee.com. So, what is personality? I mean, we take these little online personality quizzes that tell us which uh, uh, Game of Thrones characters we are, which Harry Potter characters, or the colors of our auras or whatever, or maybe we're asked to take a personality inventory for some class or as part of the uh, interview process when we're applying for a job. Uh, what's the point of these quizzes and inventories? What are they trying to tell us? What is personality? Broadly, personality represents our relatively stable patterns of behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. In other words, personality is one of the primary reasons why we are the way we are and do the things we do. Personality is multidimensional, meaning there are different parts of it. We call these parts traits. It's a matter of debate how many traits there are, how stable they are over time or across cultures, and how best to measure them. As such, there are various frameworks you can adopt to examine personality. Uh, for instance, the popular Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI, has four dimensions, each with two types. If you consider all the possible combinations, it will classify you as one of 16 personality types. You've probably heard of the types, even if you haven't heard of the test itself. Uh, if you've ever been on uh, Tinder or any of the other dating apps, you've undoubtedly seen people post the four-letter MBTI personality types in their descriptions, something like, uh, I'm an INTJ and I'd really like to meet an ESFP, LOL. Uh, the MBTI is fun, but not necessarily meaningful for a host of reasons that are probably beyond the scope of this video. So in short, we generally don't prefer it, at least academically speaking. Uh, the more commonly accepted personality inventory is the Big Five. It's called the Big Five because it measures five dimensions. We're gonna talk through these dimensions one at a time as presented by uh, Paul Costa and Robert McRae in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, we'll start with extroversion and introversion which uh, you've probably already heard of. Now, extroversion and introversion are two sides of a single trait or dimension. This dimension is best understood as a spectrum with most people falling somewhere between the two endpoints of extreme extroversion and extreme introversion. Extroversion is the tendency to be warm, gregarious, assertive, active, positive, and to seek excitement, while introversion is the tendency to be quieter and more introspective and reserved, but not necessarily unfriendly or cold. Extroverts may navigate social hierarchies better and perform better than introverts in certain jobs that require a lot of person-to-person -person interaction, like sales, Conversely, they may perform worse in jobs that require low levels of social interaction. Although extroverts may perform better in interviews because they are more comfortable interacting with new people, they should not necessarily be considered better employees. Uh, rather, as we've already stated, they may, they may perform better in certain roles relative to introverts, but may perform worse in other roles. 
Importantly, just because you identify as one or the other does not preclude you from succeeding in a job that requires characteristics normally associated with the other. Let's now turn to agreeableness. Agreeableness refers to the degree to which someone is trustful, straightforward, altruistic, compliant, modest, and tender-minded. I am not entirely sure what the researchers meant by that last phrase, but it's the term they used. Basically, agreeableness is being nice and compassionate rather than unpleasant and antagonistic. Agreeableness is generally an excellent trait to possess because we like agreeable people. Being nice will usually help you in all aspects of your life. Next, we'll examine conscientiousness, another good trait to possess. First, let me say that conscientiousness is the trickiest trait to remember and the one you're most likely to mess up on a quiz or exam. A lot of people think it has something to do with one's conscience, the uh, inner voice guiding people in determining morally good behaviors from morally bad ones, or even consciousness being awake and aware of your surroundings. However, conscientiousness is associated with being competent, orderly, uh, dutiful, achievement striving, self-disciplined, and deliberative. Basically, it describes someone who gets things done the right way. Someone low on conscientiousness uh, might be described as lazy, disorganized, and unreliable. Conscientiousness is the personality trait most highly associated with job performance across a variety of occupations. Now we'll discuss openness to experience. It refers to the degree to which someone is imaginative, creative, intellectually curious, has an appreciation and sensitivity to beauty, oh, uh, feels deeply and seeks out the unfamiliar. As such, people who are open to experience are better at adapting to change, but may become bored or impatient with routine. Openness to experience usually declines over our lifetimes. Also, openness to experience is the single trait that most readily distinguishes people who are politically liberal or progressive from those who are politically conservative. Progressives are more open to trying new things to see if they are better than our current systems or policies, while conservatives are more inclined to maintain the status quo based on the contention that our current systems and policies, although perhaps imperfect, are functioning well enough and that we're just as likely to make them worse as we are to make them better. Believe it or not, we benefit by having both perspectives present in our governmental and organizational bodies because ideally that would lead to general stability uh, with incremental improvements. Finally, let's discuss emotional stability and neuroticism. So like extroversion and introversion, emotional stability and neuroticism are two sides of the same coin. Emotional stability refers to the degree to which someone is calm, cool, and collected, while neuroticism is the degree to which someone is anxious, hostile, uh, depressed, self-conscious, impulsive, and vulnerable. Obviously, emotional stability is preferred to neuroticism, and neurotic people may experience more uh, work-related problems compared to their emotionally stable counterparts, including uh, lower job satisfaction, higher stress, and fewer professional relationships. If you're looking for an easy way to remember these five traits, the acronyms OCEAN or CANOE might help you. In both cases, the E is for extroversion and the N is for neuroticism. I think you can figure out the other letters. Uh, if you have taken or someday take a personality inventory, please be careful how you interpret the results. Most online tests are not good for anything beyond entertainment. 
If you want some useful insights into your personality, make sure that you take a valid and reliable inventory like the Big Five. Even then, there are a lot of fraudulent versions of the Big Five floating around on the internet. Also, please don't take your test results as a prescription for how you must act. In other words, don't let the test results limit you. If the test shows that you are introverted, but you really want a job in sales, go for it. I believe that you can learn to emulate extroverted behaviors, but be aware that the job may be a little more stressful for you than for your naturally extroverted counterparts. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it uh, informative and at least mildly entertaining. If so, smash that like and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you just want to say hi, please leave us a comment below. Again, my name is Dr. Rob Austin McKee with MGT.edu. See you nerds on the next video.